today I have another Halloween project to share with you another Halloween treat box it's super cute I love this one and you can fit a good amount of candy in here I put these little um, chocolate balls in there they're so cute and I got these at World Market but it was last year that I got them but every year they have really really unique candies even during Christmas and Easter and stuff um, you should check them out because they have a lot of really really cute um, treats. That's where I go to look for a lot of my stuff because um, the candy is what really motivates me and uh, gives me inspiration for my projects. But anyway, this is what I'm sharing. It is really cute. It is three inches by four and a quarter, and then it's um, one and a half, I think, no, one and three quarters wide. So you can see it fits quite a bit of chocolate. All right, so let's get started. So what you're gonna need is a piece of Knight of Navy. This is 10 and 3 quarters by three. Then another piece of Knight of Navy that's nine by two and three quarters. You will need a piece that is of, um, this one is pumpkin pie and it's three by one. Then this is from the Toil and Trouble Designer Series paper. And this is also available September 5th. And then this is the paper. And I just cut it from here, this sheet right here. This is the cutest paper. You've seen me use it a ton. This is all I've been using lately. And I'm really, really having fun with it. So you will need that. And then some scrap of Whisper White to stamp your sentiment. Do your bats and your little moon. And we will be all ready to go. So this is the stamp set. It's Spooky Sweets. I told you in another video, I think, that this is going to be a great one for bags and boxes. And I, I wasn't kidding. It is adorable. I love it. I love the sentiments with it. And it's so, so cute. And then we are going to use our um, stitched circles for this one, too. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So the larger piece, the 10 and 3 quarters by 3 we need to bring up the big shot and I'm going to show you how to get the little curved edge on it so you'll just need your platform put your paper down here I'm using the largest of the stitched circles I hope I can get this straight because it's hard to look over it I normally try to have to look over it to get this lined up so you want that at the top edge, as close to the top edge as you can get it. And then we are going, oh, look at that. I had it just right. Now I have to line it up again. And then you're going to put your other plate in, slide it in there, and then you are going to only run it through. It's not halfway. It is almost halfway, but not quite. And you're just going to run that through. And then we're going to turn it, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'll show you how to clip those off, how I do it in a minute here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run. Oops. Make sure that does not move on you. You can stick a piece of washi on it, or um, you can use uh, some sticky note to hold it in place okay and then that's the other side and what you're gonna have to do is you just can clip this right there and right there and then this side too sometimes it just comes off like that one did um, but just like that all right, let's move this out of the way, and we'll get scoring on this. I keep losing my little hostess code. That's my hostess code for this month. If you're interested in, in um, any of the products, so on this one that we cut the curve out of, we are going to score it at four and a quarter on both sides. So score four and a quarter, then turn it and score it four and a quarter. Just put that at the edge there. And then that piece is ready. 
And then the other piece that we have, we are going to score this at one half on both of these long sides. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to score it at three and six. And that's it. All right, now we are going to cut in here. And I'm just cutting up each side. I'm not going to cut into these because I want it to stay square. Get your bone folder and sharpen these all up really good because this is important to keep this square so it fits in your box just right. And I actually used wet glue for this, but you can use, I'm going to use the tear and tape for this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just adding adhesive. You can either add it on this side or you can add it on this side. It doesn't matter. It's going on the inside of the box. But you want to add a little bit just on the ends here. And then you're just going to bring these up. Make sure this is really square. So make sure your bottom is level there to the bottom. I'm going to do that on all of these four sides. Okay, so it's going to look like a U, and then that's it for that. Let me look and make sure my stitching is on the right side. We are going to sharpen these two, and then we're going to put it together. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and use Fast Fuse, but I'm going to tell you how I did this. Okay, just put it on the bottom. I did use Fast Fuse on the bottom of the other one, but the rest of it I used um, wet glue because it give, gave me time to wiggle. You want this exactly between those lines. And you can also use Sticky Strip. So you can put Sticky Strip along the bottom here and then along the sides. I am just going to put it this time on the sides here and you're going to just run it up both sides and then on this side also and like I said you could put sticky strip right here too if you want it to hold on to this it's really not necessary but you, it would give you extra strength so then we're going to bring these up and line them up to the edges Make sure that the bottom of your box is really flush against the bottom. See, like that has a gap. We don't want that. We want it to be really flush. That's why I use the wet glue, because you can ma manipulate and maneuver it a little bit better. But that's pretty good. So that is your box right there. I am going to add first this piece across the front. Right in the center. And then I'm going to put on this and I'm just going to put that in the middle. And I'm just going around it just like I do a belly band. Um, I just kind of squeeze squeeze the corners here just pinch them and on the back side I'm just gonna trim a little bit off here and then we're gonna add the adhesive I don't know if I have any snail in there or not yeah. I just got some new snail, so we're going to lay this in the center of that there. Then we're going to bring it around. And try to line these up as the best you can. Just like that. So that's the front there. So let's get out our whisper white and start stamping these so I am using the pineapple punch and I'm using that for the moon 
and for the stars. I'm going to do the moon up here. And then on this one, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do the sentiment on that one. I need to make sure it's going to be big enough for. Now I better do the sentiment on here. I don't think it's going to be big enough. I'm going to use Memento Black. I may have to grab another piece. I'm not sure. I thought that'd be big enough, but I'm not quite sure. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that Oops, in the Memento Black. I'm going to grab the little star and I'm going to use the pineapple punch again. And I'm just pun uh, punching. I'm just stamping little stars all the way around. I really like to do this on. It gives so much more interest to a when you are uh, cutting it out. So we're using this one right here. Let me see. No, that's too big. We're using the second smallest one. I thought that, yeah, there we go. That's what we're using there. And we're going to just go ahead and run that through, and then I will stamp the um, bats. So let's just bring this up here again. Scoot that out of the way. This way I have room for the, the bats and everything. Make sure I do. I'm just going to run that one through. So there's our little stitch sentiment. Isn't that cute? And then what I found easy to fussy cut this little moon. There's a little trick that I did. I grabbed my one and a half circle punch line that up right to the edge here just punch that out and then all you have to cut out is this little center piece like that and then you got your moon and now we need to just stamp the bats you know we're going to use memento black for them And I think I have plenty of room on here. I thought I might, but so aren't they cute? And then this is a um, bat punch that does coordinate with the Spooky Sweets. So it is a bundle. You can save 10% when you get it. Like I said, it'll be available September 5th. Line these up really good. There's three of them, so I have to make sure it's all lined up. And then we have our three bats. One just fell on the floor. I need to grab him. And then we are ready to put this all together. So I'm just adding some snail to the moon. We're going to put that up here. And then we're popping up this with some dimensionals. right in the center there and then we are going to just put some adhesive you can use wet glue on here too I need to get my I'm gonna have need that silicone mat for this I'm just putting it on their little bodies there because I want them to kind of pop up so we're gonna put him right there we're going to put the big one at the top. I want their wings standing out. And then there's one more. We're putting him down here. So look how cute. I think that turned out so cute. And then just add this one. I have um, the food safe bags that Stampin' Up! carries. And I put some candy corn in that one. And this one has a um, fig, fresh fig 
ribbon and this one has the grapefruit grow ribbon on it so there you have it if you if you enjoyed it please um, give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video if you need any supplies you can go to my blog at stampingwithamore.com and shop for my blog thanks everyone I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll catch you in the next video see you later bye